stage one of three of the Velo Mobile build is complete. I was able to get it on its three wheels and I'm actually able to pedal it around now, including stopping. So the drivetrain works, the wheels, the tires, everything is set up and the brakes work, which I'm pretty excited about. Years ago, I pedaled this around all the time, but it was the stock frame, stock tires. Originally, it didn't have a motor. Uh, after some time, I upgraded it to a 350 watt mid drive. So a far cry from the 4,000 watt setup that's being put on it now, but there are a lot of changes that have been made. So I'm gonna run through what has been done and why up to this point. So here's how crazy it is if I shift the front slump drive from the low gear to the high gear. You can see, I'm gonna actually speed up a little because I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to pedal. All right, switch into high gear. Oh, this is the high gear. And first off is the gearing. I wanted to be able to pedal this under my own power. Now, for those that aren't familiar, I'm having a lot of health challenges. So although I could ride a standard bicycle and commute to work and do things like that every day if I wanted to uh, a year, a year and a half ago, uh, just riding a bike at all right now is really, really difficult. So that's part of my big motivation for getting this done because I feel like something that's stable on three wheels and has tons of power, it's gonna be something that can get me into riding and kind of let me transition, hopefully back to full strength again. So I am running one of the widest gear ratios that I have ever seen. I have a Schlumpf drive up in the front, and these are a two-speed transmission that fits into the bottom bracket. One of the reasons for going this direction was that I could get a really wide, basically high and low range. And the other reason is it's just really hard to get everything I need with the electronics and the shifters and everything on the handlebars. So having a shifting mechanism that I could use without adding any complexity up on the handlebars was a big plus. So I opted for the high speed drive and that means that it has a one to one ratio in the low gear. So one rotation of the cranks equals one rotation of that front sprocket. And then in the high gear, one rotation of the cranks is two and a half times on the front sprocket. So it's pretty crazy that basically any speed you're in with the rear hub is effectively multiplied by 2.5 in that high gear. That means in the low speed, I can basically pedal from five miles an hour up to say 25 miles an hour or so. And then in the high gear, I can go from 25 miles an hour to well over 50 miles an hour which is a lot, but I wanted to be able to pedal in every possible speed that this could actually theoretically go. So just for fun, I tried it on this ride. Most of the time I pedaled in the absolute lowest gear, but if I try and go with the lowest gear in the back and the high gear in the front, I can't even pedal it. We'll see once I get up to higher speeds how well it all works together. In the rear, I am running a Shimano Alpine 11 hub. Now, the other reason for choosing these two pieces, the slump drive up front and the Shimano Alpine in the back, is that gives me a single chain line and there's no shifting uh, of the chain line whatsoever. And that just makes it a lot easier to run the chain Velo mobile chains, recumbent trike chains are notoriously long, and I wanted that system to be as simple and reliable as possible. Now, usually you'd be running the Shimano Alpine 11 on a bike, and that would be your only shifting system. It has a wide enough range that you don't need a front derailleur or anything else. Just by combining the two, that gives me that insane overall ratio. And one thing I wanna point out as well is that although this was very easy for me to pedal, it will actually be even easier once there's power to the motors. And I'm not talking about actually applying throttle and going faster, just the fact that these motors can be programmed so the resistance is effectively removed so they freewheel. So they're both direct drive hub motors. So right now, when you spin the motor, if I was to jack up the wheel and spin it by hand, there'd be a little bit of resistance and you'd see it slow down fairly quickly because of the magnets in the motor. 
but you can program that out so they will freewheel, which I think is really cool. That means you can actually coast down a hill without the motors slowing you down. Now, of course, I do have the option and I'm going to program regenerative braking in. So speaking of braking, I am using a single lever. This kind of goes back to simplifying everything on the handlebars. So that single lever on the right hand side operates two front hydraulic disc brakes. So there's one hose that comes out of the lever and then splits off and goes to each side. And that really simplifies the braking process. I think if you had separate brakes, that would be hard to actually stop without wiggling from side to side. So that's one reason for doing that. The other is simplicity. This is a braking system designed by Tektro. I didn't cobble anything together for this. You can actually buy this off the shelf. I did have to machine my own brake adapters and things, but that's just because of the design of the frame and how it was originally built. But you can also grab really cool braking systems like this from Hope. They make some awesome dual piston type setups like this as well. And then on the rear wheel, I don't have a brake at all. Now it is possible to put a disc brake on the rear wheel, but for now I opted not to. Originally when I had this Litra Velo Mobile running and on the road, I only ever used the front brakes to really slow down. The rear brake was a caliper rim brake that didn't really work all that well, especially at the speeds that I was trying to push this thing to. And effectively, I only used it as a parking brake. Parking brake is actually something I do need because when you have something on three wheels like this, you can't lean it against something or put a kickstand down. It's just gonna roll away if it's not on some sort of even surface. So thankfully the Tektro system I've got actually has a lever if I need it. I can close or squeeze the lever, flip a little switch, and it will keep those front two wheels stopped. So I do think braking is gonna be really good between the twin front discs that are 203 millimeter rotors and the fact that I can customize in the programming how much regenerative braking I wanna use. The other big thing I had to do before getting this to this stage were some adjustments to the frame for stability. Now the first one was fairly easy and that was that the steering was very sloppy. So there was a lot of play and everything. You could wiggle those control sticks a tiny bit and the wheels wouldn't move at all or vice versa. And that was not the ideal situation. So I was able to find all of the little areas that needed to be tightened or tweaked. There was a couple of areas I had to redo or install some new hardware to really get everything tightened up but the steering is really firm now. So there's no play whatsoever. That's obviously gonna help with the stability a lot. The second thing is the length. The Litra Velo Mobile was really designed for just around town city use. And so it was very short. The front wheel to the rear wheel is not very long, especially compared to most of the Velo Mobiles on the market. This thing is designed to do a full 360 degree circle in basically a parking space, but that means the steering is really, really sensitive when you're going very fast. So to help mitigate that, the frame was extended by about nine inches. It may not seem like a lot, but it really has made a big difference. I can tell already that it's much more stable in the turns. The turning radius has gotten quite a bit bigger. I think it was way tighter than it needed to be originally for what I wanna do, so I'm totally okay with that. Now in the next stage of the build, which is going to be installing all of the electronics, putting the batteries on, mounting the motor controllers, wiring everything up, I'm going to fix some of the stability there as well. And then in the third stage of building the body, I'm going to address the stability too. So the stability has already increased with the frame extension. And in the second part, the way I'm going to increase the stability is by changing the center of gravity. Now this is something that I hadn't really thought about until I really started studying uh, other Velo mobiles and and I actually found some people experiencing stability in other brands that are even designed for higher speed. So I really wanted to get down to the bottom of why is that happening? And once I thought about it 
from an aircraft perspective. It made a lot of sense. That's the point at which it clicked for me. So I have a camera here and imagine that this is an airplane and this is your engine at the front, which is very heavy. And then you have the tail going out this way. You've got a rudder back here helping with stability. You've got an elevator, which keeps everything balanced, but your center of gravity is really gonna be up towards the front. And that's because when it's traveling this way, naturally it's going to want to stay this direction. If you were to try and turn this around to this direction and make it fly this way, it's going to want to flip around. And so the tail end is always going to go to the front. And effectively, that's the situation I had with how the Litra was originally built. So at low speed, this really isn't a concern. It doesn't really matter. But the faster you go, the more that center of gravity is going to make a difference. Now, when I had that 350 watt mid-drive motor mounted on this thing, the wheelbase was very short and I had the battery that I was using mounted towards the back behind the seat. And that was not a good place for it. I have two very heavy batteries and they are going to be mounted towards the front. And because I have made the wheelbase longer, the overall center of gravity is going to be moved forward quite a bit. And I think that's going to solve the center of gravity problem that it previously had. I'll go more into the aerodynamic part of it and how that's going to increase the stability once I actually get started on the bodywork, but I think that's going to help it even more. The other interesting thing I had to figure out was the throttle control. Originally, it was going to be a single throttle which operated both motors. I think that's the simplest solution. It's the easiest. Some people were asking me, well, aren't you going to have issues that you're gonna have scrubbing with the front wheels because they're trying to move at the same speed. But remember, they're not physically connected in any way, and they're not electrically connected either. These are two separate motor controllers. So in a turn, one is going to draw slightly more power than the other, but they're not gonna go at speeds that are going to cause them to uh, scrub and one try and do weird things. So it's just really not an issue. However, the point was brought up to me, well, if you could control them separately, that would be cool because then you could apply more or less power to one wheel or the other in a turn and actually improve the handling. I thought that was an interesting idea, so I am going to give it a shot. Now, this is going to be a manual process that I do on the fly while riding. This isn't going to be any crazy electronic traction control or anything. So here's the inside piece of a standard e-bike thumb throttle. I removed these from the thumb throttles and I designed and 3D printed instead of a thumb design, a trigger design. And I have these set side by side. So I effectively have two triggers that are operated with these two fingers. And one is going to control one motor, the other will control the other motor. So in theory, I squeeze evenly as much as I possibly can to go straight. Or if I wanna take a really tight turn, I can just put power to the outside wheel. I don't know how well this is really gonna work in practice. I'm just gonna to have to try it and see what happens. Blake showed up to do some filming on some other review bikes that we have right now. And this was his first time seeing the Velo Mobile on three wheels. You got the brake is just a single lever on the right hand side. That operates both front brakes. And then the trigger shifter, which it's the eight speed hub in the back. So you can shift into any gear, even if you're sitting still. You don't have to be moving, which is cool. So if you come to a stop and you're in the wrong gear, just shift into the right gear and keep going. That's really, that's a nice feature. And then the same goes for the Schlumpf drive up front. Yeah, that's that guy right there. Uh, I can't pedal it if I'm in the easiest gear in the back and the high speed up front. It's too high. I was going to go with a single throttle, but feel that and tell me. No, that's comfortable with the two. And then for turning, I think you'd probably want to use that. Yeah. So it's, 
Yeah, so you can control each motor with each with your trigger finger or your, or your middle finger. Oh, I like <laughs> so you just squeeze evenly if you just want to go straight. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going to like a high speed turn, you can give it a little more power to the outside wheel. Right. Which or, and low speed too. I think you might find that you're going to be doing it low speed. That's true. Like Maybe. in a parking lot or something, yeah. you might give it a lot more. Just give it just right side to do a left hand turn. Yeah. Are you going to have? Yes, nice. there's going to be a switch somewhere. So yeah, the motors will have reverse too. With it open, you can just like grab the wheels and just scoot yourself back. True, true, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But once the body's on there, uh, you won't really be able to do that, yeah, so. Awesome. Yeah, I was curious without telling you how it worked, what you. Did you, did you look at it and my fingers were there? Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh, this makes sense. Yeah, like, just... yeah. Yeah, so I had to, I pulled these throttles apart mm -hmm. and I 3D printed new internal triggers for them. And they're different designs so I could try and get the spacing right. Yeah. And then you made the whole brackets. Yeah, and then I had to make the brackets. And it's a little close to your leg, but it just fits. So. Yeah. If, you could, I mean, I mean, with that gap there, what is there? So, there yeah, so the problem is if you move it closer, then your trigger finger hits this. Gotcha. And it's just, it's annoying. <laughs> so that's why I spaced it out. I could make it a little tighter. Yeah. The only other way I thought of doing it, and this would just be a design nightmare to some degree, I could take this entire thing and 3D print like a whole assembly that's like a, a grip with two triggers on it. Yeah. And then I could really make it more condensed and ergonomic. Well, down the road. So. It's like something you could. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, this just bolts on, these slide off. Like, I could totally change that if I really get into it. But I think this is gonna work. Very comfortable, though. Yeah, it'll be nice once there's a reverse. <laughs> it's either that or use your feet and like scoot back. I think so far everything is coming together really well. If you wanna see more of this Velo Mobile build, you wanna see us put power to it and test the top speed without the body on it, I am going to do that next. There's gonna be a lot of work to get the batteries installed, particularly because they are so big and there's not really anywhere to put them, but that is the next step. So if you wanna see this thing do 50 miles an hour or more, which it theoretically should do, make sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for the next video.